how do you how do you start that motion with the left knee? What what do you do? I'm going back already. My left knee is setting the angle of my downswing as I'm going back. I see. My left knee is going towards the target already. Before you even get back, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah, that's it. You're right. And I'm always hitting through the ball. Everybody hits to the ball. I'm divot conscious. I'm never ball conscious. I'm divot conscious. Pass. I figure my divot's way out here. 22 inches past the ball, my blade is still flare. <laughs> and I play into my legs. I don't play on top of my legs. My legs get wider at impact, not tighter. My legs get wider. My two feet are on the ground at impact. 60 40. I don't believe that stuff to do. <laughs> well, the ball's on the ground, they want you to go. <laughs> they want you to pick the club up. Same thing now. No, 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 what do people do? <laughs> Trying to dig, dig for gold. Look, I swing easier now, but smoother. And you swing easier and smoother. The ball still goes. Even out of dibble. Even out of a dibble hole. Now at the end of the bottom of the arc, when the when the arc is beginning to come back up again. Going down and then coming back up. Yes. U shaped swing. Never hitting at it, just swinging through. Same every time. Same every time. Same move, same swing. Hit the same angle every time. When you go about the right procedures, well, what's everybody do? <laughs> Tie themselves up? I just feel like I'm a windmill. <laughs> Here's a windmill. Never see a windmill circuit. Golf not a hitting action. Well, I just pulled my left hand. Club never offline. I'm the only human being that swings under my body. Not around. All you see today is. I never want that pointing. Never. Always at my target. Right here, watch. It's all perfect. Let you play my momentum, do it. Watch. Beauty of my swing. What do you do with your right hand? Whatever it does. I only think of this one. That's my leader. He goes through the ball first. <coughs> with the right. It's a pulling action. Oh, watch, I'll pull like that. Here's target goal. Beauty. I'm the only golfer that swings through the golf course. The only human being that swings through the golf course. Everybody else swings around. I'm the only golfer with a master move. That's cocking more on the way down. I'm the only golfer with a feeling of greatness. <laughs> the only one. Right here. What's, what, what, what's this for green? <laughs> what a great feeling. A feeling of greatness. So welcome to video four of this series for 2020, walking you through the fundamentals of my model, the single point swing in Mo Norman. And as you've seen in the previous three videos, if you've been watching the channel here, I have been discussing this in the proper order. In other words, we're working the swing in the proper order. We're not just starting you into the downswing. We're not just working on your grip. We're not just saying, hey, fix your, um, fix your lower body position. We're working this through the process. So if you haven't watched the other videos, go back. They're probably about 10 minutes each and watch me walk you through the, the v process here because this is the exact process that I use in our golf schools. We train you for three or five days 
working you through the swing process, making sure that each one of these principles is in order, and it's correct, that is the model of the single plane swing. So, not to get into too huge of a review, but we have to review a little bit, let's go into what we walk, walked through last video in, in, in this series, which was how the body is actually transitioning in the downswing. Now, transition is an important thing because what's happening is we're taking a backswing and then we're stabilizing lower body. We're putting the body into a stable position so that we can then, once we stabilize this, I call it putting the brakes on this side of the body, we can accelerate this side of the body, right? So, we, so all good golf swings have to stop on one side so the other side can produce speed. So the transition is our way of doing that. It's getting the weight over there, stopping it so we can accelerate the rest of the body. It's also creating a consistent element. If you're able to stabilize consistently and keep this in place, the rest of the body can place itself correctly. So we're eliminating variables when we do this as well. So now that we have this ideal transition, let's go through it one more time. Let's walk through how we're releasing the golf club. Now, one of the things that Mo said quite a bit was I swing to the target. Well, that's because he's on a single plane. And when you actually move correctly on a single plane, the arms go through impact and extend towards the target because of our spatial, we have the proper space from the golf ball, which I covered in the first video, in the second video. So let's go through the transition just a little bit and let's talk about how I'm accelerating that around a stable trail, uh, straight, stable lead knee. Now, when I take this backswing, remember this is based on a proper trail leg position. So I'm stabilizing into my trail leg in the backswing so that I can transition properly into the lead knee stable position in the downswing. So that was part of the other videos. Don't forget, backswing is just as important as downswing when we want to transition. Now we're going to go into the downswing. One of the things I didn't mention in the previous video was this, it's very important to have a rotated lead foot because that's going to stabilize my knee into a forward position. I see this way too often. I see people have the, the foot too straight. If there's one thing that drives me absolutely crazy, it was when I see people hitting golf balls from straight feet because it's inhibiting rotation of the body. Golf swing is a rotational endeavor. And when you do this, this is where you see problems in pain. Little, little, uh, younger people get away with this pretty easy because they can straighten their body and they're more flexible. As you age, this is a big problem for the body is, is putting tension in that leg. So I want you to make sure that you absolutely have a rotated lead foot. And I would rather have you too much rotation than too little. Watch the next uh, PJ Tour event or watch the guys who have straight feet and they always rotate them before they're finished. They always end up being in a rotation. They have to. A lot of stress in the foot if you don't start with it rotated. So please do. All right, so let's go. I'm, right, right now, we're not going to work so much downward into impact as we are going to talk about transition down. Then I'm going to work with my uh, leverage bag back here and we're going to work you into impact, okay? So let's go ahead and master this address. That's where we started this whole series. Address position being perfect. We're going to brace around that trail leg into the top of the backswing position. So there's, now remember that transition, moving the body, lower body into that lead knee. So there's that stability. And now watch what happens. This is stabilized. And now I'm going to rotate. I'm rotating this right side of my pelvis and torso. And the arms are staying passive. So I'm just rotating. The arms are coming down. And then what's going to happen is when I get to right here, see my body feels pretty, pretty stuck. The only thing that can really move from right here to me is my arms and hands. So I want you to go ahead and that's what we call position three. You're going to move down to this hitting position. And then from right here, because the knee's not moving, I can't move a whole lot. The only thing that can really move is my arms and hands. All right. So let me go ahead and train that with you. This is our leverage bag. We use this bag to train the moment of impact. Remember, impact is not really a position. It's a moment that happens during the motion. So you want to use, you want to use motion when you're training this position. You don't want to, I mean, to stand here like this is okay, and I think it's, it can be valuable, but it's better if you go ahead and hit your positions in the backswing, hit your transition, and then train. Now, I train a little differently when I train into impact. Let me show you how I train into this bag. It's not just about hitting the bag. We see people at our schools just banging the bag and not paying attention. I don't want you to do that. 
Here's what I want you to do if you're going to use a leverage bag is to use it correctly. But watch how, watch how I do this. This gets a little detailed here and I'll, I'll go through it slowly and then I'll do it all together. So here we go. I'm at the top. I, I stabilize, right? I'm rotating my upper body. Now see how that position I talk about being stuck? I want you to hit the bag from right here without feeling like you straighten the arm at all, the trail arm. See that? So you feel stuck, the only thing that will move is torso and arms, hit the bag. See that? So this is not hitting it with the arms, this is hitting it with body rotation and a stuck lower body. Notice when I get to impact, I'm going to check this with you now. There's a huge difference in how I'm doing this versus using my, just my arms and hands. Watch it again. Position three. Now let's check this. What's actually, what is happening here? Well, my lead knee is obviously in position with my lead foot, so that's stable. Notice how my trail arm is bent. My wrist is still bent backwards, and my lead arm is aligned and straight. So there's a shaft lean that's being created from hitting the bag, right? So here we go again, arm bent. You must have the trail arm bent because that's a function of body rotation. Trail arm must be bent at that moment. Look how stable that impact is in that position right there. Look how stable that is. All right? I don't want to see this standing up. I don't want to see just hitting it with the hands and arms. I want you to move the body. I want you to move the body so that the arms can stay bent. See that? So move the body just enough from here. Move the body so that the arms can stay bent, trail arms bent, lead arms straight, and you create that shaft lean. Practice that there and add a little speed to it. All right, so now we've worked. Think of the process now. We've transitioned you. Now we've rotated you. And now we're working from that position, how we deliver the club into impact the position of the body. And that's how we just worked you into impact. And this is video four of this series. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't miss out on this video series because this is Rebuilding Your Swing for 2020.